for this maxi skirt, what I did was I purchased a piece of fabric from Joann's. It's a jersey, it's a stretch knit jersey. I think it's part of their uh, Sew Classics, something like that. Uh, it was $5.99 a yard, and I got one yard. To determine the length of fabric that you'll need or the amount of fabric you need, what I would su suggest you do is measure from your waist down to the floor and then add two inches. You want to add an inch for the, the hem at the, or the, the waistband at the top and you want to add an inch um, for the hem at the bottom. So my measurement was 39, so overall I would get 41. And as for the waist or the width, I guess, of the fabric, what I did was I measured my waist, which was 26 and a half, and um, I would recommend that you double that. So for me, this actual fabric is 41 by 60. That's just the way they sold it per the yard, so that I, I'll have some extra left over, but that's okay. And then um, for the elastic band, what you want to do, or what I did anyway, and this, this elastic band has seen better days, but <laughs> I'm all out, so this is what I'm going to use. Um, for the waistband, what I would suggest you do is measure your waist and then subtract an inch so that the band isn't stretching too much, but that at least it's doing its job of gathering the fabric as well. So uh, again, my waist was like 26 and a half or something like that. So this fabric is just under, uh, or just over 25. So now what we're gonna do is, at the top of the fabric, we are gonna take that inch of seam allowance that I had talked about earlier, and basically we are going to Fold down about a half an inch, and then sew along this line so that later we can feed through our elastic banding. So I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine, fold over a half an inch, and make sure that when you're folding this over, it's wide enough to feed your elastic banding through. You don't want to fold it over too little and then be stuck with a problem of not being able to feed your elastic banding through. So I think this is like a quarter inch band, so I have plenty of room if I fold it over about a half an inch. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and get to sewing. Oh, and also make sure that you uh, are folding over, make sure that like if you have your, your fabric down like this, make sure that the pretty side is facing down and that the not pretty side or not pattern side or the side that you don't want to be shown is facing up. So that when you're feeding it through your sewing machine, your hem is on the right side. I hope that makes sense. It would probably make more sense if this was a pattern fabric. But pretend this was the pattern side. You would want the pattern side facing down and then you would want to fold it over just like that. So I've gone ahead and folded over my half inch piece of fabric and sewn along the edge and I also took a safety pin and put it at the end of my piece of elastic banding and this just makes it easier for us to feed it through the opening so you take your fabric you put it through your opening there of your tab that you've made and then you find, you feel for the, the top of the safety pin, and then you pull. So you kind of like scrunch and pull, scrunch and pull. Tedious and time consuming, but easy. So I guess that's a good thing. It's got that going for it. So you just keep doing this until you go, you get to the end, until you feed it through the opposite side of the fabric. So I'm just going to keep doing that and I'll be back. While you're doing your, uh, while you're feeding the elastic band through and doing your little scrunching and pulling technique, you want to make sure that you're holding on to the opposite end of the elastic so that while you're pulling it you don't actually accidentally pull it through too and lose it. So I've gone all the way around as you can see 
Now what I need to do is connect my two open pieces here. And to do that, all I'm going to do is, now I'm going to kind of flip this inside out so that the pretty side is facing each other. Like that. And now you can see the hemmed side on the outside. And these are my two open pieces. Got one piece there and one piece here. And I'm going to go ahead and run this through the sewing machine and connect these two edges together all the way down. So here is the top of the skirt. It's completely done. The sides are sewn together. What I have left to do is hem the bottom. But I'm going to wait till I get a nicer fabric. I'm sorry, a nicer thread to do that because it will be visible and um, I want it to match. But that would be the only thing left to do is just to fold the strip over once, fold it over again, and then run it through your sewing machine and create a nice clean hemline. So moving on to the tube top, I got a jersey knit as well. This one was a little bit thicker than this one, but it has some really great stretch. Also from Joann's, I think this was $12 a yard, and I got one-third a yard. So basically this measurement is 12 inches. Sorry about that. My doorbell rang because I ordered pizza because it's Sunday night football, and I decided to treat myself and watch the game do this tutorial and have pizza all at the same time. It's like all my favorites combined. Anyway, where did I leave off? So this piece of fabric, which is a, th a third of a yard, is 12 inches from this point to this point. So 12 inches high, I guess. And it's 52 inches wide. And the reason why I did 52 was because I wanted to double it up because it's really thin material. And my waist size is 26 inches. So 26 times 2 is 52. So that's why this piece of fabric is 12 by 52. I went ahead and folded it in half like that. So you've got two, two sides. And I sewed the bottom edges together. And I'm going to do the same thing now to the top edges. So I'll show you the bottom, which I've already done. Those are sewn together. And now I'm going to do the same thing that I did to the bottom, to the top. Run this through my sewing machine. So here are my two sides, and I'm just running it through the machine. Started to go a little too fast there, lost control. Okay. Oops. So now I have the top edges sewn together and the bottom edges sewn together. The top edge edges are sewn together and the bottom edges are sewn together. So now like a pillowcase you want to reach in and find those corners. Looks like I'm giving you guys the finger. Sorry about that. Or I should say fingers. Anyway, find those corners and pull it inside out. So that now you've got pretty seams. That is what they're called, right? Seams. You see that? Nice and pretty. No exposed yucky edges. And finally, the last thing to do is you want to make these look more squared off than rounded off. And you want to take this outside edge which is rough and yucky and you want to combine it with this nice pretty edge. Go ahead and run a, a set of uh, pins there to pin it together 
and then sew along this edge. The last two edges have been sewn together and now I'm just going to flip this out and the tube top is done. A real quick note about this 12 inch dimension. I got it by basically measuring from about an inch below my collarbone to about an inch below my waist and that was 12 inches. It might be different for some of you. I would just recommend making it the length that's most comfortable for you. Obviously bust size is going to play in um, hugely here or in my case not so hugely <laughs> uh, but that's how I would measure it. I would measure from about an inch or so below your collarbone to about an inch or so below your waist. And stretch fabric obviously helps. So here's the finished product. The maxi skirt and the tube top. And I'll just go over the measurements now that I have it on. So it's going to be a lot easier, I guess, to explain how I got the measurements that I did. For the length of the tube top, what I did was I went about an inch below my collarbone. So my collarbone's like right here. So actually it's more like an inch and a half below my collarbone. And I measured from there like this. Two. Here's my my waist is right about here. So I went about an inch below. And that's how I got that 12 inches. As for the width of the tube top, what I did was I doubled the measurement of my waist. So my waist is 26 and a half. And the waist is the most narrowest part of your torso. So find that and then just go ahead and take a tape measure. And it should feel comfortable. You shouldn't be really, really pulling hard to get that measurement. And like I said, mine was 26 and a half. I just doubled that. And that's how I got the width of the fabric. As for the skirt, again, I went from my waist because I, I wanted the maxi skirt to be high-waisted. So I went from my waist and I let the tape fall. If you can have somebody do this for you, that also helps, but if you're like me and do your project solo, this is how I did it. I just went for my waist and I let the tape measure fall through that. And then I stepped on it. <laughs> and then I bent over and I could see that that was 39 inches. And then I added an inch for the top and I had an inch for the bottom. The inch at the bottom was for the hem at the bottom, and the inch at the top was for the elastic band that I put in. So to finish off the look, I would recommend adding accessories, um, a belt, some necklaces, some cute bangles, and that's the look. I think it's very easy to accomplish this. You don't need to be experienced at all and it's very affordable to make a cute little outfit. You can play around with the colors to make them more fall or summer, spring. That's it. Thanks for watching.